Um, yes, hello, my name's Siobhan. I work in the accommodation team. Um, just to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to Paul's Life next week, um, just in case you want to go through anything again. Um, you'll also receive a link by email, um, so you get a recording also um, sent to you. Um, we have got a Q&A chat box, um, so you can submit your questions there. We're going to have a portion at the end of the presentation to answer your questions live. Um, and if we don't have time to answer all of them today, then we will email you your answers um, by next week. So I'm going to hand over to Frank, your opportunity to meet your residential manager, and he'll go through the presentation with you. Yeah, thank you, Siobhan. Thank you so much. And um, I'm so happy and glad to be here. And uh, uh, thank you to all the students uh, that we expect in September. Thank you for all for coming for the webinar. My name is Frank Senga. I'm one of the residence manager looking after Garden House, Portland House, and Brook Hall. So you're all welcome. And uh, I look forward to see you guys um, when you check in. So. Just to give you a bit of um, uh, an understanding of what we, we're going to go through today as an agenda. So uh, we have, we'll be talking through uh, before you arrive, uh, range details, we go through the arrival procedure and then uh, residence manager's role as well. I'll tell you what I do and what you expect from me as well in order to support you while you live here. And also they will talk about room contents, um, available uh, facilities that we have in place. We talk about the Halls Life uh, program that we have in Halls and also uh, health and safety guidelines um, while you live with us in accommodation. And also we'll give you more information about what kind of services and support available at UAL. And also that will be uh, followed up with uh, any questions and um, I'll be able to see if we can answer all of them. But if we don't, we'll definitely make sure that we uh, email all the answers to you. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, of course, before you arrive, so pre-arrivals, essential things that you need to know here. So uh, I would definitely encourage everyone, make sure that you complete your induction online through the accommodation portal. Uh, it's easy to do. It takes less minutes. Just jump on it. Make sure that you fill in your induction online and then review the, um, the whole guidebook, go through, read it, make sure that you understand um, all the stuff that we have for you guys in terms of your accommodation. And also, if you have any questions, you can email us on accommodation at arts.ac.uk. So that email, you should have seen it before. So any questions you have, feel free to uh, let us know. Um, so the next one is about the rent details. So uh, we have a payment schedule, which is also uh, in two, three installments. So the first one is on the 7th of September this year. And the second one is next year on the 14th of January, uh, 2025. And also the third payment is in April on the 15th, 2025. And uh, also while I can mention in there, some of the UK students that those who've got a student loan, so your first payment can be adjustable uh, to match your loan schedule. So we 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 do know that and understand that uh, all your loans uh, do come on different dates. So uh, all you need to do is just upload your loan confirmation uh, after the offer acceptance, and then you'll be sent further instructions to 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 make you understand when you'll be able to make payments. But definitely, like I mentioned, we do adjustments to make sure that. Uh, those who get loans, it's matching with your payment dates. Thank you. Um, of course, in terms of payment options, we've got um, you know, students who can pay full payments that can be either credit card, debit card, uh, upon acceptance on your offer. And there's also timely a, a payment options that we have, which are automat automatic uh, recurring on your card payments. And also there's a bank transfer. We use Flywire for international students, and that is mainly for bank transfers for, and, and e-wallets as well. Um, right, we go to the next. So I, we have also finance support. So uh, every, like all my, all my three halls, we do have um, um, a finance administrator who comes here once a week 
and also they are available on Acom Finance at arts.ac.uk and the telephone number is there as well. So if you want to get, um, pay, if you have any issues related to your card payments that can be, you want to update your card, you want to update the, the cards on your account, uh, you want to make payments plans or rental queries, anything related to uh, finance and rental payments. So there will be a finance administrator on our hall that comes every week. And also you can reach out to email or you can uh, call them. They'll be able to assist you with any uh, financial matters you have. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, Yeah, we're going to go through the arrival procedures. So on moving day, uh, what we, 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 we advise students, make sure that you present your ID. It can be your passport or your driving license or any other international form ID that you have. Uh, sign the required documents on your arrival. We'll be, uh, we'll have prepared arrival packs for you. So make sure any checking in forms that you need to sign, read them carefully, understand them, and make sure you can sign them. Then, uh, and also on the on the day you receive your uh, your key or some of uh, our halls we use a normal key. Some of our halls we use fobs. So that will be provided in your welcome pack. Um. Family and friends are welcome. Uh, they can definitely help you while you arrive or you move to your uh, property. Uh, we also say that be as quick as possible. Uh, and also we encourage people to make sure that if you if you come in, make sure that you're quick as possible so that we can allow um, the flow of other rivals to go quickly. And also that gives you time to uh, finish your settling in and then you'll be able to explore other areas around um, um, the accommodation. Um, next. So we also have um, assistance available on the day. So there'll be trolleys will be uh, provided. Help yourself to a trolley then, then make sure that you return it um, in a given time to make sure that others are able to use it. Um, and also There'll be additional help available. Contact, contact us prior your arrival. If you require any specific help, it can be that you go uh, any request that you want to let us know, please. I'll definitely advise you. Do communicate to us in advance so that we are able to, to see how we can support you on that. Um, of course, no on-site parking. However, we we you know you you you'll be able to uh you you receive emails about your drop-offs. So we'll be advising you um on how you'll be you'll be able to um uh, book slots and come in, park you have a parking slot and then for a few minutes drop off your items and then you're able to uh, offload your items and immediately you have to leave so that we can allow other flow of traffic to move in and um, uh, deliver all your um, items. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, yeah, I'll, here I'll talk about uh, resident manager's role. Oh, Siobhan, thank you for the photo. That looks like me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do provide a lot of uh, assistance to all the students that live in halls. Uh, I help you with the reference letters. And also, some of you may want to open bank accounts. Uh, you may want uh, other reference letters to, to prove that you live here. So I'll be able to provide those letters to you uh, upon request. And also, anything related to your room or to your flat queries, please feel free. I'm your first key contact. You can always reach out to me and I'll be able to assist you as much as I can. I do also a uh, flat mediation. This can be uh, in terms of any support that you may, you may need. It can be towards um, how do you maintain the cleanness or hygiene in your, in your shared kitchens or any house and safety aspects in terms of your shared accommodation. I'll also be available to uh, give you any support and guidance that you may need. Also, uh, there's also university service referrals as well. That can be um, related to finance, like I previously mentioned. It may be that you want to set up um, installments or your loan is delayed. 
So I'll be able to make referrals to the um, right uh, contacts that are able to help you. I also work closely with student services um, in terms of helping with any um, mental health issues, anything related to your well-being. I'll be your first key contact to be able to address those. And also further information can be found in your uh, guidebook uh, where you understand more information on what services that are available. Yeah, thank you, Siobhan. Yeah, um, room content. So basically your flat content. So you definitely uh, get a mattress protector. They are required. I would definitely advise all of you uh, to make sure that you cover your mattress with a provided mattress protector. Uh, we also have cutting mats available upon request. So for those who are um, doing any artwork that needs you to cut some items. So we we'll definitely advise you rather than damaging the desk or any areas in your shared kitchen or your rooms, I would advise you uh, do come downstairs and uh, request a, a cutting mat, which we can provide to you and you can leave it to your room uh, when you check out. Also, uh, I said the, the guidebook also provides you room details uh, the heating information, windows, and so on. So familiar yourself with it. There's also, uh, I, I, I would mention the inventory to be completed within 48 hours of arrival. So what it means is that once you arrive, we want you to have a look at your uh, your room, look, have a look at your facilities that we provided you. If there's anything you think that doesn't look right, if you think there's anything that needs changing or electrifying, I'll definitely make uh, advise you to put it on your inventory just to make sure that it's not something that you've damaged rather than it's how you find the property. So the inventory um, system is really helpful. It helps us to understand the nature of the room when you moved in uh, so that we are all on the same page. Uh, there will also be charges list, familiarize yourself with it, so you know all the items, the charge against them. And also, there's also repairs and maintenance information. Uh, we have um, in your welcome pack, you will receive uh, information on how to raise any requests in terms of um, anything that needs uh, maintenance attention or any repairs that needed to your room or communal areas within your flat and shared kitchen. So we do have facility uh, team on site that are able on a daily basis to rectify those issues in your room. And I will encourage you to use your um, accommodation portal to raise those requests. There's also, I would say, um, there's kitchen, uh, um, kitchen inspections that we do uh, every two weeks. Those are scheduled in. And what we do is we email you uh, prior us coming to do the inspections on a Monday. So on a Monday, we do inspections. For those who fail, we will definitely inform you on the same day. And then you have 48 hours to let's find the, um, the areas that you are requested to reclaim. So which means you have the entire of the remaining of Monday and Tuesday. And then we come in on a Wednesday to re-inspect your shared communal kitchens. Once you fail, we'll definitely let you know the outcome. And if it needs to, we do first um, uh, kitchen um, cleans and the cost goes among us um, and splits between all the flatmates. So I'll definitely encourage you to keep an eye, create a group, uh, create any channel of communication whereby you're all on the same page because the cleaning remains your responsibility. And uh, at any given time, if you need any guidance on, and tips on how to look after your, your kitchen, I'm the main key contact. I'll be able to provide those information. I can also give you a sample of rota that you can follow, which can make uh, work easier for you guys. Um, Unikit out. So this is a, one of our, another company that we use. It's a, they do provide the bedding, uh, kitchen items as well for order. So that information is also provided for you guys. Thank you, Siobhan. Uh, we'll jump on to the facilities available on site. We have a refuse um, uh, area and recycling center. So it's all based on a garden house. It's on the ground floor. And Portland house, uh, we've got five houses. For Easter house, um, annex and central, 
uh, and West House. It's located near the car park. It's very visual. You will definitely see it's an in enclosure. That will be your refuse area. And also for, for those who will be living in South House, there's also uh, one destinated area at the end of the building, which is easy to see as soon as you come in. Uh, for Brook Hall, it's the, the end of um, the buildings. You'll be able to spot it once you are at the main reception in the garden area, and that's where it is located. Um, all our uh, accommodation do come with the common rooms, and that's where you have games, pool table, fuse table, and any other facilities. And also our host life events do take place in the, uh, in, in mainly in our common areas. So there will be a lot of um, uh, games that you guys can enjoy. They are all equipped with a television. Uh, we do have some of them have got PlayStation and any other games. So it's a communal space that we encourage students to meet and mingle, get to know each other. So it's another space that is available within 24 hours, uh, for 24 hours within our facility. Uh, posts and deliveries, all the posts are delivered at the reception, and we also manage them in-house. And also everybody, you will receive a QR code, which you will scan and you will be able uh, to get information if your uh, whether your um, delivery or post has been delivered. Also, we do provide you with post key for your mailbox. So for those who will be receiving letters, can be a bank letter, it can be a postcard from your parents or friends and loved ones. So you be uh, everyone will have a key for their post uh, post post boxes, and you'll be able to collect them at any given time. Uh, also. I would mention in terms of post, we do have uh, at Garden House and Portland House, we have an extra facility, which is an Amazon locker. Uh, you will see the name is called Taya. It's easy to find. And if you need more information how to use it, we do have the uh, details at reception. Now, reception is also available 24 hours. Our team run from 8 to 8 p.m. And then from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning, we have a night team. So, our business uh, is open um, 24 hours. So there will be, that is mainly for Portland House and Garden House. And at Brook Hall, we do have reception, which is open eight to eight. And we do have the wardens that who live there. You will have the information for anything that you may need. There will always be somebody to help. But mainly for Garden House and Portland House, you have uh, receptions that are mainly covered at all 24 hours throughout the year. Thank you, Siobhan. Yeah, we'll talk about Hall's Life, like I mentioned before. So Hall, Hall's Life is a multi award winning uh, student experience team uh, within UAL. So they provide support and activities and events for students living in halls of residence across London. So in all of our halls, we do have a Hall's Life team that will be running those events. So the team offers a diverse range of uh, options, including big nights out, a new students venues and also uh, there's a quieter creative sessions at your host that will be also run by the um, host life team and also the host life team are here for you so for any concerns that you have any um any any additional uh experience while you live here that you want to be created or any ideas that you have myself will be here i work closely with them to make sure that we are creating a vibrant community to make sure that you guys, when you come here, you feel at home and you can enjoy while you live here. So yeah, the whole life, look out, out for them. We'll, have, we'll be having their posters around the building and you also receive information uh, via email that tells you what events are taking place and you'll be able to enjoy them. Thank you. So here for you, that is mainly for well-being. So um, he is a cost of live co cost of living support. So we what we do is they do provide um, some free um, things. For example, we got dry food, pills, products, and laundry powder dispensers, which are provi provided in the laundry machines. Uh, we've we also um, introduced community fridges. So there will be uh, those will be located in, in the common room. Uh, and feel free to use them as well. So they also uh, 
stress-free um, items as well, such as well-being bags, yoga, media, uh, med meditation classes that will also be available. There's also space uh, for you on Sundays, puppy therapy. Oh, actually, I, pup, um, the puppy therapy is amazing. I had like a 10 puppies around the common area. It was so beautiful and amazing. So I would definitely encourage you guys Look out when that event is coming up and don't miss it for those who love uh, puppies. And also uh, there's peer support as well. There's a coffee and chat sessions and also Curie Peer for podcasts as well. So look out for that information as well. So myself, I work uh, along with the, uh, uh, with the host life team. Uh, we'll also be doing other events within the, uh, uh, our host. Uh, just to make sure that uh, you guys are enjoying um, your stay with us. Thank you, Siobhan. Yeah, this is a big one, health and safety guidelines. So, um, of course, we want to make sure that you're all aware of our fire safety in place. So we do weekly um, fire alarm tests. Those take place on Wednesdays at uh, 12 o'clock. If you hear them for a few seconds, it's just a test that we are running on Wednesday. But other than that, if it goes longer, you will have to evacuate the building, go to a destinated um, fire point assembly. And also uh, on a timely basis, we do fire drills uh, uh, to make sure that you guys um, are familiar in terms of any uh, emergency evacuations. So we do drills on a timely basis once. And also, this will help you to get to know your escape routes and also assembly points uh, you get from, because we have, um, I've got three sites. So as you can imagine, some of the sites like Portland House, we've got five houses in there. We've got East House, Annex, Central and West and South House. So it's very good that you attend uh, those um, uh, key um, events so that you you know where to go in case of any emergency. Um, so expect a frequent uh, alarms initially. So that is mainly maybe people cooking. It may be, um, it may be you know, people using different things that may trigger the fire alarm. However, all our building are non-smoking area. And I would definitely encourage no anyone to smoke within the building because at the time that can trigger the fire alarm uh, necessarily. Um, there's no indoor smoking, like I mentioned. Uh, vaping is not allowed as well. Such activities will definitely trigger the fire alarm and we'll have to investigate it further. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, also, inform the residence manager of any um, health conditions that you may have uh, I'll be able uh, to support you in any way possible. Uh, also, myself, I do run PIP. is also available if needed. And PIP is a personal evacuation emergency plan. It may be that because of your health condition, we need to design an evacuation procedure that is definitely customized to you, uh, depending on your needs. So please, if there is anybody with any requirements, or maybe they find it that it will be difficult for them to escape uh, uh, the building in case of any emergency. I'll be, as soon as you arrive or when you fill in your A induction, make sure that you mention it in there. I'll be able to design uh, something that is suitable to you. Um, work regulations. So check with your management. So definitely, you know, make sure that you can check out with me in terms of if you're permitted to work. Um, and also you can refer to your tenancy uh, agreement terms and conditions. Uh, also, also, like previously I mentioned, I use the provided cutting mats, which will protect more of your study area table rather than damaging it. So I would definitely encourage everyone, for those that want to use them, please do communicate to reception. We'll be able to provide those. Thank you, Shavan. Yeah, um, so do not use any spray cans or naked flames, uh, hazardous chemicals, 
should be stored in, in safely at the university. So for those who are doing earth and you've got some flammable materials or uh, sprays or any chemicals and stuff like that, make sure that those are stored safely at the university designated areas in their kosh cupboards where they are not um, in the outside. Um, personal devices, no e-scooters or e-bikers on site. Um, uh, charge laptops, phone on your desk, not on your bed or floor. So we definitely want to make sure that in terms of safety or anything that may trigger any fires around the building, make sure that you know your mobile phones or your uh, chargers uh, for your laptops, it's mainly kept on your desk rather than having them around your bed area and all that. Thank you, Siobhan. Next one, personal safety. So traveling around London, uh, make sure that you're in a safe area. And also we encourage you to use the uh, licensed cabs uh, such as black taxis or Uber. There's so many apps that you get to know that you can definitely use, which are regulated and also uh, licensed in UK. Uh, use the city mapper for planning your journey. It's a very good app that tells you what time to take the bus, where to take it, where to make your connections. So familiarize yourself with the city mapper. It's a very good app that is very well known out there. Keep your variables uh, hidden, especially when existing tube stations or any other buildings where there is a lot of crowdings. Um, also, like I said before, member of staff will be available at reception 24 hours a day. So if you have any question or you have anything that has been on your chest and you want to let us know, please do communicate to our reception team. And also you'll get full information of your residence manager and you can always reach out at, uh, uh, to me anytime. I'm based here Monday to Friday. And um, yeah, I'll be able to support you and answer your questions as much as I can. Uh, delegating, so do not let anyone follow you into the building unless they, are, they have their own key cards. Um, and make sure if you have a visitor as well, we have a visitor policy in place. You have to register your visitor uh, at reception. And also if you have an overstayer, you need to let your manager know so that we can record it for you. And also I would encourage everybody to refer back to their terms and conditions within the tenancy. There is a visitor policy that will give you more information on how to, on what to do. Uh, Serve the host site mobile number. So as soon as you arrive, definitely in your welcome pack, we'll provide you our landline number and our mobile number for the site. So you you find those information in your arrival packs and the number will be displayed at reception as well. So at any time you can reach out to us and we'll be able to answer you promptly. Right, next one. Uh, the available support, uh, support that we have at UIL, your residence manager is, is there to help you and can sign post you to the uh, any UIL um, support service. You can also contact UAL um, student services at any time if you're struggling uh, and you also you need any support. They offer a range of services, um, including things like student advisors. Uh, they do counsel, they do have counselors, health advisors, and chaplains. So that is available to the student services, disability advisors, dyslexia coordinators and specialist tutors as well. You can contact student services by visiting the webpage. So it's just www.arts.ac.uk slash student slash student services. So it's very easy. Just put in Google, you'll be able to get the link. Thank you, Siobhan. Yeah, um, so for any questions, contact our accommodation services. Uh, also, that is the, the link for our accommodation. And also the email is accommodation at ask.ac.uk. Very easy to remember. And that's our main line, UK landline. 
available Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And also we have the Hong Kong, Hong Kong number that you guys can always call. And that will be between those um, hours, 9.30 to 6.30 GMT plus eight hours, yeah. All right, thank you for that. Thank you, Frank. That was a very far out and a lot of information there, so thank you. Um, so yeah, anyone have any questions now? We have got 15 minutes <laughs> available to uh, pick, pick Frank's brain. Uh, so we can answer your questions live. And if we get too many to come through, as I said before, we will email you a response uh, within a week. So um, we haven't got any questions at the moment, but feel free with the Q&A box just to pop some through now. And um, yeah, I'll ask Frank your questions. Mm -hmm. um, and if no one's got any questions, because Frank covered it all, then obviously we can end early, but one has just come in. Yeah. Um, when will we find out who our flatmates are? Yeah, um, normally what we, the, the only time that you'll find out uh, who your flatmates is only when you arrive and when you check in. Uh, so sometimes we won't be able to uh, get such information, but the information will be available as soon as you arrive. You arrive here and you check in, you'll be able to know who your flatmates. Yeah. Thank you. And Ashun would like to know if it's possible to change rooms once you've already accepted an offer. Yeah, um, students will definitely you move in and um, depending on what circumstance you're looking at, uh, there is a possibility we can do uh, change rooms. However, it's very limited depending on the situation that we are fully booked at the moment. But um, we do allow people to submit in a room moves, and that is depends on the availability. However, from the 31st of October, that's when I'll be able to start looking into processing the request for room moving. However, um, if there's any special need uh, that a student uh, has or wants to put in as a request, I would encourage you to make sure that you do communicate that to us prior you arrive here, then we can see how we can support you as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you. And um, is there free Wi-Fi in the flat? Absolutely. Uh, your property comes with a, a modern, well-equipped um, uh, Wi-Fi. It's all around the building. You've got your reception in the common area. And also we've installed a lot of uh, routers all around in your rooms and the communal space, including your kitchens. So you'll definitely be able to get strong Wi-Fi. For those who want to wire their uh, laptops, they will have to get their own internet cable. Then you'll be able to directly wire your laptop or PC. But what, what I've seen most students do, they all use our wireless um, Wi-Fi system and connection, and it has always worked very well without any issues. Thank you. Thank you. I should have like to know if you can have parcels delivered to this site for the arrival date. So it's there for when the students are arriving. Yes, yeah. So as soon as you check in, uh, I would encourage you that, because at the moment, if you send a parcel here and we, we don't know your room number, we don't know if you live here. So the best way is only start making orders to be delivered here once you've moved in, okay? or you can do other stuff, but make sure that they are delivered um, once your contract starts on the 7th of September. That way we'll be able to check against our system and we'll be able to definitely uh, store. So all the deliveries are Delta reception and you have a QR code, like I mentioned before, you have a QR code that says that your password has been logged and is a reception ready for collection. So you can definitely do that once you arrive. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the student plans to check in on the 10th of September. They want to know if um, someone will be available at reception to check them in um, because the date is different to what they stated in their induction. That's fine, of course. Uh, all the contracts start on the 7th of September. However, depending on uh, where students are coming from, some people arrive a week after or some people arrive on the same day or the same as the student mentioned, definitely 
Our building is open 24 hours. Any given time of the day, being day, being night, our reception is always manned and there will always be there somebody to receive you. And also, if you have a specific request, always send us an email uh, on our accommodation, being Brook Hall, Portland House, or Gandhi House. Let us know that you are arriving late. We can let the night team know. But always, for those who are arriving, we have all the arrival list on the system. As soon as you come to reception, they will definitely know that it's you and we expect you to come and arrive and they will also um, help you and give you guidance to where to go to your room. Thank you. Thank you. Similar sort of question. Um, she wants to know if they reach later than the day, if they can reach later than the day they say it's on the accommodation portal. Um, I can quickly answer that is that um, you can update the details that you submitted on your e-induction. So you can uh, go in there and update it. Um, just so the information is more relevant. But yeah, you can amend those details. Um, Shida would like to know, um, after moving in, are they able to bring in more things, um, more suitcases at a later date, for example? Yes, correct. Um, you can move in with a few items and then you, you do a good study of what you need. Um, in my own experience, I've seen students move in with little items because they don't want to buy everything. Uh, just to see how the room is, what is needed, what is not needed. So I'll definitely say yes. And you can arrive with a few items and then you can look around. Um, the same thing we mentioned before. Uh, we've got a Unikit out, which is in a, your uh, whole guide uh, guidebooks. Uh, some I've, I've seen students use um, Argos. I've seen students use Amazon or Ikea to buy more extra stuff just to support their living style in holes. So yes, once you are here, it's your home. Uh, it's your home, it's your, it's your building, it's your, it's your way your heart is going to stay for the academic year. So feel free, it's your home. You are entitled to order any items you want, but as long as you know, they are all going to fit in nicely and there won't be anything to obstruct your evacuation process in case of an emergency. Thank you. Thank you. I should like to know when they enter the dorms at Garden House, can their friends come with them? Is there a gate that you have to swipe your card to get in? Uh, yes. Uh, on arrival day, like I mentioned before, uh, you can come with family members or friends. And, um, and also, after you've moved in, you're allowed to have visitors. I would encourage you to refer back to your tenancy agreement. There is a visitor policy clause on there. Make sure if you have a, a visitor coming in, they sign in and sign out. That is due to health and safety in the case of any emergencies. So we know who are the visitors, we know where they are and things like that. But other than that, if you have an overstayer, we have a process that you need to follow. So you, you let the residence manager know and we can record that on the system. Yes, you are allowed to have visitors. However, to make sure that uh, um, we are all on the same page, refer back to your tenancy agreement. There is a clause of visitors policy there. Thank you. Thank you. And is there a gate where they'd have to swipe a card to get in? All our entry at Garden House, everybody moves in through the college. So you use your college card to enter the college. And when you come to Garden House, you use your form to enter the building as well. And for Portland House, we've got gates. They use the uh, card system. And at Brook Hall, we use a keypad system with the pin codes that put you in the building. And also, if you're on block A, B, C, or F, so you have a specific code to your particular uh, block. And once you enter, then you can use your key to enter your particular room or studio. Yeah. Thank you. Can the students use extension cords in their rooms? Tell me again. Can the students use extension cords in their bedrooms? Yes. Um, make sure that uh, if you have, uh, there's a lot of um, um, socket plugs around uh, the properties, depending if it's a garden house or brook hall or Portland house. Definitely there is enough sockets, but if you think that you need an extra one, I'm happy you can buy one, but make sure that uh, nothing is obstructing the uh, the, the, the middle space in case of any emergency. And also 
uh, to avoid overloading one socket with the millions of uh, uh, you know electric items plugged at the same time. Yes, yeah, but I would definitely say have a rethink. Probably use one, but the the properties provided with enough sockets that you can use. Thank you. Thank you. What are the regulations on wall decorations? Can students put up posters? Yeah, we do have um, uh, p uh, the, the bolts with the where you can use pin bolts, so you can stick your posters on the on the pin bolts that we provided. However, what I've seen is um, some people use blue tag on the walls, and uh, if you're thinking you're gonna live in a property for fifty weeks, chances are the blue tag is gonna dry off the wall. The moment you pull out your poster, it damages the wall, and then we end up repainting the entire wall. So I'd advise students to avoid putting any paintings on the wall or making any nails on the wall, which means that that is a damage and that can be a cost as well. So to avoid any damage charges, I would encourage students to use something that is non-sticky, but also to mainly use the board available. Thank you. Thank you. Is there parking available for the convenience of moving items in at the initial arrival date? Yes, there will be parking facilities available and there will be a team on moving day, coordinating that, telling you that you have a slot for this period of time. Make sure you, you, you park correctly, you add offload the items, and then you can also move your car uh, somewhere else whereby we can allow other traffic to flow in and also um, others let, to let the others move in as well. Yes, there will be parking available on the day, but not for longer. It will be a slot of a very short period. Thank you. Uh, should we like to know if there's a place they can store their suitcase or will it need to be kept in their room? Yeah, all the suitcases are kept to any room. We wouldn't say we don't have any responsibility and we don't have any uh, available facilities to store them. So I will encourage you uh, to use the space available carefully in your room. For garden house, you do have storage under the bed and you do have storage for any other properties. You do have storage above your wardrobes where you can definitely fit two suitcases. But uh, I would advise you avoid, avoid bringing in bulky items, which could take a bigger space. And um, my experience is for those who are being dropped off, sometimes they are dropped off and then the bigger boxes are taken back. Thank you. Should we like to know what the shared bathrooms are like? How many people share the bathroom? Yeah, for for garden house, um, we have a shared flats. A flat is composed of nine students with three showers. In garden house, which means you have three people sharing a bathroom. Uh, so one cluster has nine students with three bathrooms and toilets together. So uh, three per student. Now, when you move to Portland house, it depends on where you are located. Some flats have to six people, some flats are only two, some other areas is only three people sharing a bathroom, but that is scattered all around the five houses that we have. But the number is not always more, more than three people per uh, bathroom available. Yeah. Thank you. She would like to know if they can continue renting the dorm for another six months when the lease is up. Um once, once the lease finishes, uh, for example, if you're moving in in September and your contract ends next year in August, it meets the end of the contract. We only have a gap of two weeks and have a new academic year. So I would definitely say you have to book another new year, but depending on your courses, um, it, some people do have, um, who are doing MAs, their courses might be um, going on until December but sometimes we do have rooms that are available to, um, to rebook. But I would say it's not guaranteed because um, every year we, we have a, uh, we've been given a limit number of the rebookers that we can take in. We only take up to 10%, but only that depends on the applications we have. And also there is a, we need to make sure that there is a priority for all the new uh, freshers or the new students that are moving in either for foundation or first year uni. So those are the mainly the most priority students that get accommodation. So I'll definitely say when time comes for returners uh, applications, you all receive the information 
and you'll be able to follow that and then we can assist as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you. So it's the end of our time slot, but I just ask one more question that we've got here and then the, the rest, um, I assure you, we will email you a response within a week. Uh, the last question is, uh, will students find out the floor number at check-in or will they be informed earlier? Yeah, students will find out, uh, will find out their uh, floor numbers and uh, room numbers once you arrive and you've checked in. So that is the time you'll be able to get the full information. Thank you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, thank you everyone for attending today and look forward to seeing you in September. And, uh, yeah, thank you for that presentation as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, whatever part of the world you are in, uh, I'm so glad to have been given this chance to meet you all and um, prepare well, uh, fill in your e inductions, any, any questions you have, our email is available here, uh, accommodation at ask.ac.uk. Feel free to call us anytime. And myself, I'll be here in September to make sure that uh, I receive you very well. So we're going to have good vibes. It's going to be a very good, lovely uh, community here at uh, Garden House, Portlanders and Brook Hall. And um, I look forward to see you all. So have a, a happy day and... Um, you know, enjoy and prepare yourself very well. I look forward to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.